Thank you, Rafa. So uh, welcome to another session in this great event. For the next 20 minutes or so, we'll be talking about Dag authoring some of the challenges that we've seen customers having with it and some of our ideas on how this could be mitigated and improved. Uh, it's called Dag authoring without PhD. And I think as speakers, we're well qualified to deliver the session as none of us has a PhD here. So let us get started. Let us start with a quick introduction. So my name is Filip Knapik. I'm a group product manager working on Cloud Composer for almost four years by now. Uh, before that, I was working on a different Google Cloud technology called Google Workflows, which I managed to launch uh, in more of a serverless space. Rafał? Uh, yes, uh, my name is uh, Rafał Biegacz. I'm an uh, engineering manager responsible for Cloud Composer. I have been working with Airflow for uh, more than four years. Uh, and I I'm also a member of uh, Airflow uh, Summit organizer uh, team. So if you have any uh, good or bad uh, comments about the conference, uh, reach out to me. I'm going to consume everything I want to deliver. Uh, uh, okay, so before we jump to the very topic, uh, let us maybe uh, mm, uh, take this opportunity to, to say that uh, you can actually find us in the Google, uh, in the Google uh, booth. There are a couple of... Uh, uh, Google engineers uh, there. Uh, all of us are working on a Composer on a daily basis. So if you want to get information about Composer, this is the best place to to, to, to start. Uh, while being in the booth, you can you can uh, learn more about uh, Serverless Composer, which is a new product offering that we are planning to launch in the, the next uh, couple of months. Uh, about new features that we uh, recently announced and delivered: uh, disaster recovery and data lineage. Uh, if you have a need to run Airflow uh, under public sector uh, conditions or, or, for example, with uh, assured workloads uh, constraints, uh, uh, I know that it's, we know that it's very, very kind of uh, challenging uh, task. Uh, Cloud Composer actually can, can help in this uh, area. We have also a meeting uh, space, so if you don't uh, want to talk uh, at the booth, we can go to the meeting space uh, for, for deeper conversations. Uh, and last but not least, here is a bit, bitly link. You can uh, follow it and you can request uh, either a meeting with us or uh, more information, or you can try to register for coupon for GSP credits. And now uh, to the topic. So writing DAGs seems to be uh, easy. And uh, this uh, slide actually shows the, how it could potentially uh, work. So you have a, someone has a business need uh, as, a, as an engineer, as a DAG developer, you are translating this business need into uh, technical requirements. And then you need to, to translate those technical requirements into the APIs that needs to be used. Uh, you need to uh, know the methods of the APIs that you want to use, the same with parameters. Um, and of course, you need to know operators that uh, can you, that can be used actually to use those uh, services. And th this knowledge is pretty pretty vast. Uh, I would say that uh, probably there is more than one thousand operators out there. So the the the, the, the knowledge is actually uh, pretty rich. And all of that comes on top of uh, the other knowledge that, by definition, you should have. Uh, so you should uh, have the knowledge about uh, Airflow, Python. And I'm not even mentioning some ID or CI, CD uh, stuff that you have uh, in your in your company or in your uh, team. So eventually, you you uh, at the at the end of this process, you get a DAC. Uh, based on the conversations with thousands of uh, users, actually, we see that people are struggling uh, with the, the vastness and and the vastness of the knowledge required actually to write uh, proper proper DACs. We see that many times people end up in uh, implementing uh, custom operators based, based on bash operator or Python operator uh, instead of using off-the-shelf uh, oper operators. They are also not applying uh, uh, best practices recommended by also uh, community. And they need to, and actually when working on a DAC, you, you need to aggregate the data from many, many domains. So. It, I hope that it's not going to, to sound like, uh, like a complaint because Airflow is actually fantastic. It's very flexible. Uh, it provides you a lot of uh, tooling and that's why we love uh, Airflow. On the other hand, it is not an easy uh, technology for sure. Uh, so in general, I would say that uh, we hear from many customers and users that DAC authoring is actually pretty, pretty hard. So we ask ourselves uh, the, the question, okay, can it be any easier? Because in the end of the day, what is happening here is that this business need is translated by the engineer into a piece of 
uh, code. So it's like an act of translation. Um, and actually, generative AI, especially large language models, are actually very good at translate, uh, translation. And they are also very good at uh, aggregating uh, knowledge from, from many do domains. So in general, the hypothesis here is that we can easily use uh, some machine learning models uh, based on uh, large language models to help in uh, DAC development. So how potentially we could uh, do it? So our, our proposal is basically, of course, to use existing uh, uh, pre-trained uh, large language uh, models, either open source or proprietary delivered by, by many co companies. Uh, assuming that you have the data set consisting of pairs of prompts and DAX, we can use the transfer learning or specific type of transfer learning called fine tuning and produce a new large language, language model that can be used actually as this intermediary uh, component translating a business need uh, into uh, a duck, uh, duck code. Okay, it sounds simple. So where is the hook? The hook is uh, uh, in, in the first uh, box in this uh, diagram, which is related to having a data set of DAX and prompts. We discovered that although Airflow is very popular, actually, if you go to the internet, it's very hard to find very good examples of uh, uh, DAC code. Uh, and there are many challenges uh, here. So for example, many times people are publishing some samples of, uh, of the code, but without any license. So actually, you are not allowed to, uh, to use this information or this data for training the machine learning uh, model. A lot of DACs are actually not written in a good way. The, like airflow best practices are, are not followed. Uh, for example, decorator, uh, decorators are not used. Uh, people are using uh, airflow and environment variables in global sections of the DACs, which actually impacts the performance of the scheduler and, uh, and uh, processors. Uh, last not, but not least, if, as, the, uh, as a start date, people, people are using many times date time uh, now. Uh, instruction, which leads to actually in the, uh, undeterministic uh, scheduling uh, uh, of the DACs. Uh, and sometimes you, you can even uh, reach a situation when DAC is not scheduled at all. So in general, uh, you could think that you have a lot of good samples of the DAC code out there, but it's not the, uh, the, the situation. So what we, what we, uh, right now are focusing our efforts on in, in, in Google, uh, uh, in the team dealing with Airflow in the Living Cloud Composer. Uh, so right now we are prototyping a type of an interface uh, where you basically uh, are, able to, are able to deliver a prompt. Uh, once the prompt is delivered, we are uh, uh, requesting a response from the uh, large language model. In our case, it's Duet AI. Uh, model, which is state-of-the-art machine learning model offered by Google, but actually this is an implementation detail. This large language model could be like anything. Uh, it can be any large language model that is available in, in open source. Uh, to achieve this uh, fine-tuning or transfer learning, we defined uh, a set of uh, DACs with prompts that potentially can, can come from the real users. And we, uh, we are helping the machine learning model to learn how those ducks uh, actually should look uh, like. Uh, but in the end of the day, we discovered that actually to do the proper job here, we would need to have uh, literally thousands, if not more, uh, duck, uh, duck samples with pro proper uh, prompts. Uh, so this is one thing that we have a problem or challenge with scale. On the other hand, uh, we wanted, we would like to basically share with the, co with the Airflow community all the work that we did so far, so other uh, community members can actually use uh, this data to, for training their own machine learning uh, uh, models. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, So even though you may have seen that we have quite a progress in the space, uh, we have actually realized that many of the challenges we're solving are not composer specific. They're specific or maybe universal to Airflow as a whole. And we would like to share some of our learning, some of our uh, progress with the community and invite others to join us in the effort. So here is the proposal. So we would like anyone in the community to be able to build such large language models that are able to generate Airflow DAX 
and even build your own tooling around it, integrated with whatever tools you have in your CI/CD pipeline or development process. But to get there, as Rafa mentioned, we need to create a collective large data set of good examples of DAGs following proper uh, coding methods, proper examples, proper diversity as well, and become a standard universal shared uh, library of DAGs and prompts that anybody could use to train and build their own models. So our specific proposal is that we would like to establish an open source repository that uh, would act as this central place where anyone can contribute their DAGs. Obviously, we would kick it off by contributing with our own data sets that we have been using in what Rafa was just showing in the prototype, in, in the early version we have. So we would donate our own training data, our own DAGs, our own prompts. And we would also obviously build some framework around how those DAGs could be contributed or used by others. I'll, I'll cover that in a second. And again, invite everyone in the community to join us in the effort, contribute their own DAGs, and use them as you see fit to create your own language models that you can use in your own tools for co-generation of Airflow DAX. So how the contribution process could look like, could work? It's probably not rocket science here, but obviously once we have the main repository of the examples, your uh, contribution will start with cloning of that uh, repository. You would add your own DAX and corresponding prompts to it. Now, what we would also establish in this framework in this open source community would be some quality checks, both for the DAGs as well as the prompts. So we would run some pre-submit checks, for example, around are those Python DAGs, a proper Python, you know, proper Python files that are, are they properly interpreted? Have they been properly registered in Airflow DAG bag? Are they properly serialized? And also some quality checks around prompts themselves to make sure that whatever is being contributed to this, to this uh, repository can actually act as a high quality uh, model for training of such uh, large language models. So that's basically the contribution process. Again, not only we would contribute, we would establish a process, we would contribute our own DAGs, but we would also kick it off by creating some quality procedures around contributions that could help us govern the quality of the contents of this repository. Um, some other highlights for guidelines of contributions there. Um, well, probably the First thing is almost obvious, but as typically in machine learning, the more examples we have collectively, the better, because we have more data to be trained on. Uh, one thing that is also important is not only the quality, uh, quantity, but also the diversity of examples. So uh, maybe we're unable to cover ourselves some of the domains of DAGs, but maybe somebody else has those. And again, the more diversity we can inject into this repository, the better, because we will be able collectively to use uh, such models for more use cases. But what's also very important is that such contributions need to uh, follow guidelines of not having uh, PII data, not having any references to, for example, users, uh, customers that you may have, and other things that would be considered sensitive. So that's critically important because otherwise, obviously, DAGs generated could spill some of those elements outside. Um, and also, we would like to ensure that such DAGs in the repository would follow proper coding standards, because if you think about it, such, uh, such, pe such pieces of source code generated by large language models would become a starting point for many actual developments of, of all of us in this room, right? So if we follow the right coding practice in the training model, we can also help to improve the coding practices of the community as a whole, because that will be the starting point for further developments of anyone in the community as well. Uh, last but not least, we would also like to capture as part of the uh, contributions in our own data sets as well, versions that those pieces of prompts and DAGs were actually tested or working with, because at some point, some changes in the airflow itself may render some of the examples as, as obsolete or no longer valid. So we need to understand that as well, so that we don't recommend versions of the code that are no longer working the late, latest version. So again, this is just a sneak preview of what would, could be the contribution guidelines uh, for such um, DAGs and prompts that we would be uh, capturing ourselves as well. Now, when it comes to the usage of those uh, DAGs and prompts in the model, um, again, probably nothing particularly uh, shocking in this, in this diagram. It all starts with the main repository that you would clone. You would add your own, uh, you would basically um, have a local repository or have your own repository that could start as a, starting point for your own training. That there's one more thing that I'd like to point our attention to, which is, as part of this repository, we would also like to create some tools that can transfer the, <coughs> excuse me, transfer the data uh, that we have in the uh, provided data sets 
into formats that are understandable by different AI stacks. Just to give you an example, for example, Vertex AI may need to have the data in a slightly different format than Llama 2 or some other frameworks. So it's not only important to have enough of examples, it's also great if we had tools that can generate from those examples data that is understandable by different AI stacks, because this could also help to expedite your own training and reuse the knowledge across all of us. So this is also something we would do, we would, do, we would kick it off, uh, for example, to uh, convert the examples that we all provide into Vertex AI understandable stack. Simple thing to do for us. We're definitely going to do that. Some other stacks we may want to follow up with as well. And just to give you a, a very quick example um, of one of the users of such uh, models, of such examples of DAX and prompt. So how this would, could work in Vertex AI if you wanted to build your own large language model, fine-tuned based on such examples. I'm not going to go through all, every single setting here because it's not a matter of uh, let's do a Vertex AI training, but just to show you how relatively simple it is. If you go to Vertex AI uh, user interface, if you click on language models, create tuned model, because it's a fine-tuned model, right? We're starting from a model that can understand Python and we're fine-tuning with it with Airflow examples. We're not starting from scratch. So it's a tuned model, supervised tuning, let's continue. You pick a couple of different settings. For example, in our case, since we're talking about code generation, it's code Bison as a, as a base model. Uh, you provide some extra uh, inputs, like what is the working directory uh, and storage object. Um, and, and here is an interesting item. So you're providing an input, which is a fine tuning input. So basically this is a collection of all of the DAGs and prompts that this fine tuned model in Vertex would need to understand and put on top of what it understands in Python itself. Now, this is a single file in a particular format. And in our own repository, our contributions of DAX and prompts may be in a different format. So this is what I meant before of having some form of a small tool that can take all of our inputs and spit out a format that different AI stacks can understand. This is an example of an input format of an AI stack, in this case of Vertex AI, that we would also create a tool for. Okay? So again, not only the prompts, not only the DAX, but also some tools that can help kickstart training in the most popular AI stacks, Vertex AI in here as an example only. Um, and then you just train the model and practically speaking, you're done. So again, just to wrap it up, what we're going to be doing in this space is we're going to be sending an email to the Airflow dev list in, a, in the following days or maybe two weeks or so, starting the effort, starting the process of creation of such open source repository and framework around its management. We would also, once obviously that repository is established, we would contribute our own data sets that we have been using so far in our own training. And we would encourage everyone to join us in the effort, contribute your own examples, and feel free to use those examples that we have as you fit, see fit, and hopefully create some fantastic tools that can help us all generate DAX in a way simpler way for all of our users. Um, and you know, for the benefit of our full community as a whole. I think we're perfectly on, on time for the core presentation. If we have still some time, we can open for questions. Thank you. That's a very exciting product. So I do have a question um, regarding how, how would you keep your um, Airflow, let's say the Airflow DAX example and, and the other Airflow packages, how would you be able to keep them up to date and always use the newest version or uh, if there's any library dependencies? If you if your generated code doesn't integrate well with your users' uh, code base, how how would you uh, tackle those problems? Yep, great question. So this is, let me expand on this point uh, a little bit. So once we capture such inputs of DAX and prompts, we would also need to capture some metadata around what those DAX represent and how they were tested and where they work. Part of this metadata is uh, what is the version of Airflow this DAC is supposed to work with, but also what are the provider packages or other Python modules that we know that this one is actually working with. So without this metadata, such DAGs could be indeed difficult to be used. Uh, so again, we need to capture not only the DAGs and the prompts, but also what would be the kind of environment that we know that this code would be working with. Now, uh, at some point, uh, obviously such DAGs could become outdated um, and part of the, quality checks that would be built into the repository would need to be to continuously test whether they work on the newer version of Airflow 
and with particular uh, versions of packages. So that's part of the automation of the, uh, let's say, pre-submit process uh, and an overall re repository to confirm that they continuously work. I, I think this is a great framework for you know, creating an open source, uh, you know, way for, for folks to, to train their own models. But I'm curious, is there interest on your part to to publish a, a model that's already trained with these DAGs already uh, yeah, in it? Great question. To be honest, we haven't made a decision uh, in this space at all so far. Uh, again, as Rafa mentioned, so far we're uh, training our own models uh, in-house. Uh, so we're, we're, we're basically testing it as it, as it is. Uh, let me refrain from answering directly since we still have to decide on this one. We definitely want to, first of all, we want to encourage everybody to be able to use those, this input data and train their own models. Whether we publish a model itself is, is I think, something to be decided. By the way, one thing that we are doing, at least right now during the prototyping this solution, we are training, we are helping to train the Duet AI model. And what AI model is uh, like publicly available, like in this sense that you can you can basically use use it. You would need to like become a GCP user and use it in your application. Uh, do you do you actually have some estimates on how long time can you save with using Gen AI with Airflow in Google? So let me just say that we've been using it in-house for quite some time already to test out the different things. Like when we talk to customers and they say, I struggle with this, we typically start with creating such natural language inputs and see whether we can kick, kick it off. And this already helps us a lot uh, in, in building such examples uh, for our own usage in-house. Uh, it's, it's not only time saver, it's also effort saver, meaning like if you don't have to traverse through all those different pieces of documentation to figure out what to do. And that knowledge is kind of collected into the large language model. So th there, is, there is a tremendous benefit there already. Yeah. Philip, can you uh, scroll, uh, scroll down to the slide with where we have our proof of concept? Actually, uh, when it comes to the very act of development, you actually get a working duck within seconds. So normally, for me to, to author such a duck, it would take half of an hour. Yeah, and it may not be perfect, but you can fine tune what you have. It's already, it's more than a boilerplate, right? It's, it's a great starting point to tune. There's a question from the front. Yeah, this DAG basically parses correctly. Uh, one question that DAG generation part right here, that's done by the worker? I mean, you did call the model or? No, it's done by the large language model that sits outside of the uh, composer so uh, Airflow core environment. So we're talking so about. You call that, right? Yes, uh, correct, okay. correct. Yeah, hi. So, uh, this is a very interesting concept. Uh, my question is that Google, with all your um, uh, Google, has a diverse set of uh, data needs, and therefore a diverse uh, set of DAGs can be generated within Google. Uh, if you are using large language model to train uh, the different diverse DAGs that you have, can you also not add to that some simulations? of DAGs themselves with variations that can simulate a, a near real world uh, sort of DAG representation and then just help us. <laughs> absolutely. By the way, yes, absolutely. We, we talked a lot about it. For example, we can create different variations and even Cartesian products of various approaches to building DAGs and this way artificially generated, but it will never be as good as the collective knowledge of the development community and also the diversity of various expressions of the code. And at the end of the day, we need to be able to write as a human and not as an, you know, uh, a bot that is just mixing different pieces that it knows. So I think we can get there, but there's a limit of how far we can go with this approach. But absolutely, that's something we looked into. If anybody has any further questions, you can find us in the Google booth. Uh, but uh, let me pass to the next. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.